Good morning. I want to welcome everybody this morning to Cornerstone Worship Center. Even though you may not be able to be here in body, we hope that you're tuning in to, to us this morning. This is Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of the last week of Jesus' life. This is when he comes strolling in on the back of a donkey and laying palm branches in the streets, hollering, hollering, Hosea, Hosea, Hosea. This is a week where God truly proved his love for each and every one of us over and over and over. Come and join us this morning. Our praise team makes their way up on stage as, our, as, as we get ready. But I'm going to read a scripture to you right quick as they're getting ready. I read it this morning in a video that I did on our Facebook page. But it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. For the humble shall hear of it and be glad. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Verse 4 it says, And I sought the Lord, and he heard me. He did. And delivered me from all of my fears. Not some, but all. Father, we come to you this morning. God, and as we get ready to go into service, Father, God, I ask that you lead and guide each and every one of us this morning. But God, for every man, woman, and child that is out there watching us this morning, God, let them feel your presence just as if they were sitting in this room right now. God, we ask that the Holy Ghost falls in every living room this morning, every bedroom this morning, every kitchen, every car, no matter where they are this morning. God, we ask that the Holy Ghost just begin to fall and minister to each and every one of them this morning. God, if they're still asleep right now, wake them up this morning. God, wake them up. Shake them up this morning, God, and they will get up and ready this morning, Father. God, they're excited to hear the word of God this morning. God, they're excited to praise you this morning, God. God, let our voices this morning be a sweet sound in your ears. God, as we honor you this morning, for the love, the grace, and the mercy that you've shown each and every one of us. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, we, we want to stay with what we've been doing, and today is Flashback Sunday, so we ask this morning, put your hands together right where you are and join in and worship with us this morning.
this morning. I woke up singing our ways and hallelujah. And the first two weeks of this was, it was okay. I didn't like it, but it was okay. I could deal with it. And then when they made the announcement that it was going to be longer, I'm going to be transparent with you. My spirit just kind of plummeted. Come on. Because I thought to myself, you know, already in week one, we've seen one or two fall away. Week two, we've seen a couple more. And this is week three. Lord, in six weeks, where are they going to go?
Chapter 6, verse 19 says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Hear me now. Is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye, ye have of God, and ye are not 
your own. Hallelujah. In this time that we're going through, and then we'll be going to change. In this time that we're going through, and these things that we're going through, I've been talking to people at work everywhere. Everybody's talking. People that don't even talk about God are talking about God. Yeah. But let me tell you what's going on. We are in a test right now. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says that we'll go through trials. We'll go through temptations. We will go through tests. Come on, preach we will go through tests. And we have to stand strong. As, as they were hanging there in the dungeon, Paul and Silas, when they were hanging, they were going through a test. They could have easily gave up. They could have said, I'm done. God is going to hang there and die. But no, they began to praise God. They began to shout on high. And the walls began to shake. The earth began to move. People, you want God to do good. you got to shake the earth right now. In Jesus' name. In James chapter 2, it says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Hallelujah. People are going through divers' temptations right now. It's so easy because we don't come one to another. People go, I can just sit at home. I can enjoy myself. I can do what I want to. Nobody knows. But let me tell you, God knows. God knows your heart right now. He knows whether you're sitting there just going through the motions. Maybe you turn this video on for five minutes and you watch it and you say, I've done my part. But let me tell you, Jesus says that if you don't make it through this test, you're living right now. There is a literal burning hell that is waiting for you. Because you have to go through the test. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. This is not a time to sit back and say, I'm not going to church, so I don't have to serve God. Yeah. The Bible says, ye are the temple of God, yeah. and the Holy Ghost dwells in you. Yeah. Yeah. It dwells in me. Yes, God. This is not a Sunday. And if so many people are Sunday morning Christians. We have those Easter morning Christians. We have those Christmas time Christians. This is not a time to be one of those. This is a time to stand in the gap. This is a time to say, I stand strong on the word of God. We want to overcome this. Stand strong on the word of God. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, you said, Brother Larry, people are still dying. Yeah, but let me tell you something. There are those dying and going to their heavenly home because they still stood strong on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, they're getting to forego this pain and suffering that we're going through right now. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Larry, that's a rough way to look at it. No, that's a heavenly way to look at it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. It goes on there. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yes, Come on. People, we've got to have patience. Right now, it's so easy to say, well, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to go my own way. I want to do what I feel like doing. Yeah, but that's on. not patience. Yeah. Patience is that time where you get down and you pray. And you, you earnestly seek God. And you listen for his voice. You wait for his answer. Patience. Yes. Hallelujah. People were going through a test. Let me tell you, a lot of people say, well, I wasn't good at testing school. Well, let me tell you, you better be good at this test. Yeah, because this test has an outcome. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna fail the class. You ain't gonna be able to come back next year. This ain't no summer school going on, people. Let me tell you, you failed this test. You failed this test. And there's a direct line to the gates of hell. Yeah. And that's somewhere that you don't want to be. Come on. You don't want to go to summer school in hell. People, stand strong. Amen. Be the temple the of God. It's not this building. Oh, yes, it's great to gather together yeah. and to fellowship one another and to gain strength off one another. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is the most power yeah. that you yeah. can ever yeah. have. Yeah. When Paul and Silas were hanging there in that dungeon, let me tell you, it was dark. It was cold. There were chains about it. There was nothing good to see. No. But when they began to praise and they looked up, they saw Jesus himself. Hallelujah. They knew that the presence of God was there. Yes. yes. Come on. You want to feel the presence of God? You, you say, well, I don't go to church. I can't come to church. You want to feel the presence of God? Get in God's place yes. in your life, in your heart, yes. and begin to minister to God and be a servant of God right there where you are. Amen. Even in your worst circumstance, be a servant yes. of God. Oh, my yes. Hallelujah. 
keep on preaching. I began to pray early in the week on what was I going to bring today. And I know it's Palm Sunday. And not to take away from that because I'm not. I believe this is going to add to it and get you ready for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. But are you listening this morning? Amen. Come on. Or because you're not able to come to the church house, you're not able to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ, have you gone deaf this morning? Listen now. Come on. Have you gone deaf this morning? Lord, we worship you, God. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3. Very well known story in the Word. Starting in verse 1, it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in them days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass that at that time, while Eli was laying down, in, in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was laying down, that the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and laid down. Then the Lord yet called again. Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli. And said, here I am for you called me. And he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know yet know the Lord. Nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord said, or and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place, and now the Lord came and stood. The word says, Now the Lord came and stood. Come on. Come on. And called, as at other times, Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel answered and said, Speak. For your servant hears. Yes, Father, I come to you this morning. And as I bring forth your word and your message this morning, God, anoint me this morning. Give me the words of wisdom that you would have me speak to your children. God, whether they're sitting in this room or they're watching this morning, God. God, I also ask that you open up their ears, their hearts, and their minds this morning. That God, they're ready to receive your word this morning. Not my word, but your word this morning. Yes, Father. But God, they will not add to this word nor take away from it, God. Yes, but God, they will grab a hold of it and put it to use in their life today, Father. God, for we thank you, we praise you, we honor you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening to this, this morning, church? Come on. See, it's easy when we're not coming to the house of God, when we're not able to fellowship with one another, surround ourselves with like-minded individuals Come on. to grow weary, to grow tired, 
to fall back into our old ways. Yes. See, when we're absent from the church, our spirit man begins to grow weary. Come on. Because most individuals are not disciplined enough to feed themselves outside of the church house. Come on. Preach. You don't know how to prepare a meal for yourself without somebody giving you the finished product. You know how to sit down and eat of the word, but you don't know how to prepare the word for your own consumption this morning. Come on. So I ask the question again, are you listening? Because see, Samuel, God called on him and he did not know the voice of the Lord. Why? Because first he had never heard it. Let me ask you the question this morning. If God called you by name, would you know the sound Ooh, of on. his voice? Come on. Come on. See, not only did God call him by name, it says he stood there. Yeah, come on, come on. In the presence of of God and still did not know who was calling him out. So I ask you the question this morning, if God was standing at the foot of your bed calling your name, how would you answer this morning? Come on. Come on. Come on. Think about it. Would you get up and run to your mama's and daddy's rooms? Or run into the living room to see who come in the house? To figure out who's calling your name. Yeah, I know flesh wants to take over. And our fleshly carnal mind wants to say that it's an individual, a human, and not the Father. But if he stood there and he said your name, not once, not twice, not three times, but five times. Because the last time he called Samuel out, he called him Samuel, Samuel. In other words, look, we all know as a child growing up that if mamas and daddies wanted to get our attention, they said our full name or they repeated our name very quickly. I do it now with Joshua. I'll say Joshua, Joshua. I'll say Joshua David. And he knows to listen. Do you know to listen when God calls your name? Come on. Yeah, come Are you on. deaf listen. to the Father? Mm. Well, Pastor, I don't know that it's him. If you'll get into this, yeah. Yeah, come on. you'll know it's him. Yes. Why? Because when you get in his word and you begin feeding your own spirit, man, outside of the four walls of this church building and not relying on the men and women of this church to, oh, yeah. to supply every meal for you, everything that you need to, it, it, it cannot, it should not be handed to you. You should have to go out and get your own. I preached a sermon many years ago about not feeding on yesterday's ashes because what was prepared for you yesterday is not good today. Come on. You need to refresh your spirit man, daily. Yes. You need to feed yourself daily. You need to drink daily yes. Yes. to survive. Yeah. So child of God, he's standing at your foot then calling your name. How are you going to answer this morning? Come on. See, this is a test of time of your spiritual maturity this morning. Yes. yes, Are you strong enough? Are you mature enough to make it through this time of not being able to come into the church house? Come on. Come on. Oh, the enemy is standing out there saying, look how many I'm gaining daily. Look how many men and women of so-called God are falling away and are falling back into my hands Come and on. I'm getting to use them for what I want to yeah. use them for. Come how on. many men and women can go to hell while we're going through this 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 time of disease? Yeah, come on. Because they're not strong enough 
and in the Lord to be able to make it through. Oh, we don't have men and women of God reaching out to them because it's no longer about them. They don't care about the ones that are out there. It, it is our place as men and women of God, and I don't care if you're a pastor, a pastor's wife, associate pastor, Sunday school teacher, or just someone that comes to church. Yeah, come on. And you don't hold a position. It is your job. It is your place to reach out to the men and women of your community at this time because they are falling away from God because they can't see the love of God coming from men and women that are tall men and women of God. Come on. See, when God stands there and he hollers your name five times, how are you going to answer? See, growing up, if my daddy said it twice, that was it. Yep. There wasn't a third time that my dad called our name. And it didn't matter if you said, I didn't hear you. When my daddy spoke, you jumped. You knew to get up. You knew to answer, Brother Mike. And we didn't answer with, what? We said, yes, sir. How do you answer God? Huh? What now, God? I didn't hear you. He needs to look at us and say, it's because you wasn't listening. That's right. You didn't care to listen. You heard me, but you ignored me. See, men and women are dying and going to hell because of that statement right there. You heard me, but you ignored me. Yeah. You ignored my command. You ignored what I instructed for you to do. But pastor, I'm not a preacher. I, I, I can't go out and minister. Three words. God loves you. Man. Say it with me. God loves you. And if he loves you, you can tell somebody else that God loves them. Yes. Amen. See, Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, we may not be physically in this house. Whether for meeting we're doing a drive-up service. Amen. And I don't care if we've got to park them down the, the shoulders of the highway if they want to come. Yeah. We'll let the police come in and direct traffic for us. We'll let the police come and tell us that we got to move along service. But we're going to do a drive-up service, if all possible, on Easter. Yes. Yeah, we ain't going to be able to get out, shake hands, hug necks, and do all that good stuff. But we're going to come together as men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're going to worship the Lord. As I said this morning in my message, as I began, not only here but on Facebook this morning, what the word said. We're going to praise God, church. Come on. And it doesn't matter what the enemy does. It doesn't matter how hard the enemy tries to stop us. I don't care how long this lasts. Right. I hope it's over tomorrow. Amen. But guess what? If it ain't over tomorrow, we still going to come together and do what we need to do. Amen. We're going to still praise God. We may do it ten members at a time. But we're going to praise God. Because when God called my name, when God calls my name, I have to be willing to set, set up in that bed and look at God and say, Here I am, God, your servant. Yes. What can I do for you today? Come on. So many times we say, Well, God, I'm tired. I just got done doing something for you. Is it somebody else's turn? I'm going to go to our food ministry for just a moment. I knew this food ministry would be a little work. Be a little rough. We had some learning curves to get through. But let me tell you something. It ain't a little bit of work. It's a whole lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. A whole lot of backbreaking work. People might say, well, why do y'all do it? What are y'all getting out of it? Nothing. Nothing. The church isn't making a dime off of it. 
It's costing us to do it. It costs us every week to go pick it up. It costs us man hours to sort, prepare, give out to the community. During the pouring down rain Friday, we're standing in the rain. Giving it out. People say, well, why? Because God said, David Malone, this is what I need you to do. This is the vision, son, that I'm giving you. These are the tools that I'm giving you to do the job. Amen. Now, son, I'm going to begin to make ways and supply the means to do it. Yes. Serving God, men and women, is hard work. Yes. It's not sit back and take the gravy train. You're not going to get your cake and get to eat it too in one day. You're going to have to mix that batter. You're going to have to bake that cake. You have to be patient while it cools off. While you put that weight to put the icing on it. Then you can add whatever little toppings you want. You can add your little sprinkles or whatever else. But in the end, when you take a bite of that cake, it is so much sweeter because you prepared it. You didn't go to Walmart or Kroger's or Brookshire's and buy a pre-packaged, already-made cake that's been sitting in the cooler that the, all the moistness is gone out of it. The icing on top is like you're eating Play-Doh. Look, Brookshire's and Kroger's and Walmart's going to ban me for that. <laughs> together, get in and research what's best to make it taste the best, it does taste the best. Yes, Amen. Amen. Everybody says nobody can be mama's cooking. Why? Because we grew up on it. We've ate it for so many years. My wife is here looking at me now as I say this. My wife is a phenomenal cook. No, she knows what I'm going to say. And she's the closest thing that there is to my mama's cooking. Because why? Because my mama taught her a lot of the things that she cooks that I like. Why? Because it was a recipe or a technique that my mother had finessed for years. My wife took it, took everything from my mama's side and added her own little twist to it. Yeah, there is some of her mamas in there. But added her own little twist to it and made it her own. Listen to me. What works for me, ladies and gentlemen, may not work for you. But this right here works for everybody. Now you may have to pull out a different ingredient out of this book. What ingredient worked for me may not work for you. But if you're willing to reach in and search and redo your research and, and put in the time, the ingredient is in here to make you who God needs you to be. Amen. So that when he stands at the footboard of your bed, stands in your bedroom when the lights are out and nobody else can see what's going on, and he calls you out by name, you'll be able to recognize the voice of God and know who he is this morning. Amen. Because there's going to come a great day that the glass doors on this building are going to open back up. Yeah. And when that day comes, you're going to be able to fall and come into the house of God. And you're going to realize that what we had, that we lost for this period of time, was good. Yeah. And why did I not want to go before? Yeah. I want you to think about something and I'm fixing the clothes. Places all across this world, men and women are not allowed. Yeah, come on. Come on. They are not allowed yeah. to go to church. They are not allowed. 
to worship our God. Come on. We serve, we live in a country where we can go freely into the house of God. We live in a country where we can freely praise yes. our God. Thank you, Jesus. Until right now. Mm -hmm. When you can no longer come into the house of God, mm -hmm. and that's just a small taste of what Think about it. Yes. they have. Yes. The thing is, is, they are willing to die to get into the yes. church house. Come on. Are you this morning? Amen. And I'm not talking about the four walls here. Come on. Come on. I'm talking about getting up out of bed on Sunday mornings, preparing yourself, getting up and going to church, yeah. and not laying in bed and sleeping yeah. all morning. Come on. It's a privilege to be able to go to church Amen. in this country. Yes, it is. Because over there, it's not even a privilege. Come yeah. on. If they get caught, they're dead. Yeah. They will be killed. I'm going to go back to my scripture this morning. Psalms 34 and 4. It says, I sought the Lord. I looked for Him. I went looking for God. Yeah, come on. Listen to me, men and women of God. I went looking for God, the Word says. He didn't say God found them. He said, I sought God. I looked for him. And I looked and I looked and I looked until I found him. Yes. Come on. Somebody say, Pastor, how do we know where to find him at? Where did you leave him at? Come on. That's good. Come on. Hmm. I'll leave that one for another day. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Not my wife, not my mother or father or grandparents, aunties, uncles, children. He heard me. I did it. I found God. And it says, and delivered me from all my fears. Ooh, thank you, God, for your word. God did not give us the spirit of fear. No, he did not. He made us victorious. Yes, he did. Church members, you've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again. He made you the head and not the tail. Amen. He made you first and not last. Yes. He made you victorious and yes. not a victim this morning. Hallelujah. He made you a fighter this morning. He made you a warrior this morning. He did not give you the spirit of fear to run scared. He did not give you the spirit of fear for you to sit in your home and be, and be scared to come out. Look, we're going to be wise through this, but we also know that if we serve God and God is our Father, and if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been bought, we have been paid for, and it is sealed. In the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Either way, we win. Uh -oh. So when I need God, come on. I'm finding God. Yes. yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I instruct you this morning mm. to ask yourself the question. Are you listening? Bless you. This morning. Can you still hear the voice of God? Even though you're not able to come into the house of God? Touch you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Are you able to do it on your own this morning? Come on. Are you still relying on somebody else for your salvation? Come on. Are you still relying on somebody else to prepare your meals for you? Jesus. See, when young ladies are growing up at home, at home, their mothers are teaching them how to cook, yes. how to clean. See, in my home, us boys did the same thing. Yes, ma'am. We learned to cook. Yeah. We learned to clean. Yeah. We did yard work. Yeah. Why? Because they were preparing us for a day when they would no longer be here and we would have to do it on our own. Yeah, come on. 
the men and women of God, it is time that you stand up on your own two feet this morning and, 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 and do what God has called you to do today. Amen. You are strong enough to do this. You are powerful enough to do this. God has equipped you with every tool you need this morning to survive. Yes. You have to open the toolbox this morning and reach in and grab the tools out. Because as long as you leave the toolbox closed, the tools are being unused. And as long as they're being unused, they are of no benefit to anybody. It don't matter what the tool costs. It don't matter where you store it at. If you don't get it out and use it, use it it's useless in your life. Amen. So I instruct you this morning, open up your toolbox this morning. You got 66 books to go through. 66 to go through. And it will supply every tool that you need to succeed yes, this morning. Yes, You're at home with me. I want you to bow your heads with me right now. Father, we thank you this morning. And we honor you this morning. And God, I just ask whether they're sitting in here or they're at home watching. God, I ask this morning that you touch them right now. God, if they've grown weak, they've grown tired, God, give them that extra little bit of strength this morning. Give them that little bit of extra energy this morning. God, I ask this morning that God, even though we can't fellowship in large groups, Father, God, let them know that we still love them this morning and that we're still praying for them this morning and that the God of yesterday is still the God of today and he will still be the God of tomorrow. Yes, you are, God. Because he's not changing no matter what the world says, no matter what condition the world is in. God, you are still God. And God, I thank you for that this morning. Hallelujah. And we praise you and we honor you this morning. And God, help us not to forget the sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us this morning. That we are bought and paid for by the blood of your son. And God, for that I stand here this morning as your servant. Yes, Jesus. And I say thank you. God, open our ears to hear your voice this morning like never before. God, if they've never heard you, God, I ask that you begin to reveal yourself to them right now. Yes. God, for every man, woman, and child, and the sound of my voice, God, as they lay their heads on their pillows tonight, God, you will begin to speak and minister to each and every one of them right now. Yes. God, we thank you. We praise you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to ask you right now that if you need a prayer request, you have a prayer request, and you're watching, Post it. Make a comment, make a post. And we will pray about it. We will call it out by name. We will call you out by name. Amen. 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 Now I'll ask, we're going to take up an offering real quick here. If you're watching live, I'll ask, don't get off because I said offering. <laughs> this is our time to give back to God what is God's. Yes, you need it this time. Yeah, I know. You may be having to do it electronically through our website or our text to give or you may be having to run up here and drop it off. But it's important. Yes, it is. And if y'all know, if you're a member of my church, I do not talk about tithing. I do not beat you over the head about paying your tithes. But I am going to ask you right now that that you need to give God what is God's. Amen. I said an article yesterday that said the churches are losing millions of dollars right now. And unfortunately, the church has bills just like you do at home. Yes, amen. We have lights, water, insurance, mortgage payments. Yes. And I'll go ahead and say even my salary is in there. 
So let's give God what is God's. Yes, let's give him his 10% and you keep your 90 this morning. Yes, You're at home. Take your wallet out. Let me in, take your wallet. Ladies, grab your purse. We're going to read this blessing right now. Today I act in obedience and I bring my tithe and offering into the storehouse. This man of obedience will feed the hungry, clothe the naked, reach the lost, love the world, and expand the kingdom. I do not give to be blessed. I give because I am blessed. Deuteronomy 20, the Lord has commanded the blessings on my life. I'm no longer a slave to the lender. I've been set free from the chains of debt. The devourer has been rebuked for my sake. The nations of the world will call me blessed. I'm blessed in my field. I'm blessed in my basket. Now I'm blessed in my story. Galatians 6 and 7 says that God will not be mine. For what sort of man so that will he also reap. And today I declare that the windows of heaven are opening up to the bright blessing in my life. Why? Because the blessing is mine. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Join us Wednesday night at 6.30. We hope to see everyone there. We love you. We're praying for you. Have a blessed week. Amen. Y'all pick up your trash. Don't leave your trash.